morning and great to have you join us on the round table this morning here on Aspe Radio and Television. My name is Joy Dadini Asun. Today we'll be discussing the looming food crisis that agricultural experts and experts all across have warned Nigeria about. What's causing it? What's with the inflation and food hikes um, that we see <coughs> lately? That's what we'll be discussing with an expert, an environmental expert. He also is uh, an agriculturist. I'm not sure what not to um, uh, <laughs> describe you with. You seem to be uh, dabbling in a lot of things. He is engineer Ernest Ntuk. Engineer Ernest Ntuk has been on this program when we spoke about um, food, uh, food safety in Nigeria. So, uh, first of all, why are we here? Now, why are we talking food crisis? Look at Nigeria with its its beautiful landscapes uh, and um, agricultural weather, rather ag a weather for for agriculture. Why are we talking food crisis? Um, uh, first of all, thank you for having me. I am very delighted to be on this uh, program yet again. Um, why we are here today is very simple: insecurity. Insecurity is the reason why we're here today. And it's going to get worse because it has actually laid an egg in the system of our country, basically. What I mean by that is um, insecurity is like a Trojan horse. It's a virus that is in the fiber of the Nigerian system. And now we are actually at war with ourselves mm. because a hungry man is an angry man and uh, most of the teeming population of Nigeria is not just hungry we are very hungry insecurity in the northeast as well as the northwest coupled with climate change has uh, brought us to our knees actually and uh, in fact let me not say too much that um, the government must ask um, a need yeah. declare the food sector, declare state of emergency in our food sector. So according to the global report on food crisis, 13 million Nigerians stand at risk of um, having these food security issues. Do you agree with that number? Completely, I do, yes. Wow. Uh, well, if you do agree with that number, how come? Uh, I'm not sure what indices one should see to get to say, yes, I see uh, people suffering, people unable to afford food, but what are those um, uh, indices one must see in the society to be to agree with this uh, appalling number? Okay, of course. You can see um, the cost of food, I mean, commodities in the market, is hitting the skies. Right. I mean, uh, most recently, Beans in the market now sells for like a thousand one hundred naira. That, that, that That's exactly never, how much it that, is. That has no. never been done before. Gary is up, rice is up, every stable food is up on the roof already. And people don't have the purchasing power right now. Mm. And the economy, basically, it's not really helping. Nigerians are crying. Nigerians are actually on their nails because they don't even have money and there is no food. Right now, there's something that is happening within the food sector. You would recall um, um, when the Rayfan, the mm. Association of Rice Farmers, cried out the other time, over 5,000 hectares of grain went up in flames and bandits killing farmers had a farmer crisis in the exactly. northeast and in the northwest. All of this put together is actually creating a lot of problem in, uh, in the food sector. Um, allow me to say that um, the government, of course, tries to encourage the production of food through NISAL, agricultural uh, uh, motivated programs. And all those intervention programs. All the interve intervention programs that government has actually been putting together. Um, it's really not helping. Do you know why I say it's really not helping? No, I have no idea. Yeah, it's because the government is actually investing in food production. But of course, they are not even securing the farmers. Right. Most farmers are sconning from their farmlands. Of course, this, this is a serious problem. Once rural economy begins to dwindle, it is going to affect what is consumed in the urban centers. Mm. The urban centers are fed from what comes out from the rural, rural community. Centers. Now, 
if farmers are migrating from their homes and running to the urban centers just for security purpose and the bandits are having a free style, they're having a free day in doing whatever they want to do, this is why we are where we are today. Because it's such a dire situation. Would you say that, um, I remember that time when rice farmers, I, I think, were, yes, were yes, murdered yes. in their farms. Yeah. And the military said, you didn't get permission. Is it a hurdle to get those permissions to ensure that well, as you go to the farm, you are attached to security and all of that? Is, is, is the process difficult? Because food is a, is a serious matter. Yes. Um, farmer security, it's beginning to uh, uh, give us concern now. You, you've heard head of farmer crisis in Benue, it's happening in the northeast, it's in the northwest, even in the south, south. Basically, everywhere in Nigeria right now, it's a boiling point. We have flashpoints of violence everywhere. Mm. The crisis is beginning to hit us. And that's why I mentioned initially that the crisis in Nigeria is like a Trojan horse. What the bandits or the terrorists or BH has successfully done is to instill that virus in exactly. our very system. And that virus I mentioned before is like a Trojan horse is eating us from the inside. If the government does not do something really, really quickly to annex the looming food crisis in our country, you're going to see a massive attack on the entire system. Because you're going to see, when, when, when people are hungry, you will see mother, father, and children going out to scout for what they would eat. And I need not say it. When mother, father, and children go out in search of what to eat, crime would be. Uh, <laughs> we need not say it really, yes, but yes, yes, uh, yes. there's also data that shows that 70% of small scale ag agricultural um, uh, participants or, or those participating in the agriculture sector, we get 70% of produce from them. Would you consider yourself, first of all, as a small scale? Because you seem to, to, to have your, your farm in large scale. What support would you need uh, in that sector, apart from security? Because we also have the problems of climate change and the adapt, adaptability uh, problems. Yes, um, small scale farmers, of course, um, an average farmer should be able to do about five hectares. Of course, that is still within a small scale. When you go mechanized, you go above 20 hectares, 40 hectares, 100 mm. hectares, and in thousands of hectares. In Jerry, there's uh, this farm uh, called the Pea Board. Basically, it's um, an agricultural program that was put together by the then president, um, um, Opasenjo. And um, that farm is over, um, I think it's over 20,000 hectares mm. of farmland. And you have farmers taking portions of them in. 10, 10 hectares or 20, 20 hectares based on what you can do. Now, farmers are allowed right. to go in there and lease this land. But of course, they are not supported moving forward. I am a victim of that as well. I took a land within that area to cultivate rice. And I, I, was, I was one of the biggest rice farmer at the time. But I did all of this in two years. And not even the local government realized that I was doing, doing that, that in well. there. So when farmers are putting up efforts to see how they can contribute to the food bank of the country. Mm. And the, the people in government are actually not looking to see where these farmers are actually going so as to give okay. them you some support. form of support. No, we would, we would go yeah. back to um, the much support that is necessary. Uh, but uh, you have also mentioned that uh, you were in a, in, 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 in a local government or a community and the government didn't know. Is it something we should start doing? Uh, should we re be registered uh, 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 farmers? There should, should there be some data for how many people is, uh, uh, is farming what? Yes, of course, there should be. Last time on set, I mentioned before that the, the government needs to make an intentional effort to document and gather data for farmers. Yeah, farmers who are doing what, like you mentioned, must be brought to bear. Mm. Government must know and liaise as well as, um, 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 of course, uh, work out modalities right. with the farmer association or commercial farmers association. Mm. We'll, we'll get to this association. I'm, I'm, I apologize. I have to cut you there. We'll just go on a very short break. When we return, we'll be joined shortly by somebody from the Poultry Farmers Association. Stay with us. We'll be right back.
Many thanks for staying with us. Uh, we are still on the roundtable where we are discussing averting the looming food crisis in Nigeria. We are being joined now by Ibrahim Lamidi, who is a farmer and the former General Secretary of the Poultry Association of Nigeria. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Without mincing words, I would like to know, and I'm sure a lot of Nigerians want to know, why do we have the prices of eggs so high these days? I mean, in some areas, you buy it as much as 2,000 naira for a crate. Why is that? Well, thank you, Mr. Padre. You know, one thing in Nigeria, we always have one challenge or the other. The problem starts from the farmers, the cross farmers. The cross farmers are not the major problem. The problem starts from the bandits. Left, right, same here and there. So and we are at that price. There's no maze. So we are trying to meet up, cannot meet up. So when there's increase in the maze, the supply chain, or a break along the line, the price of egg will increase because it's from that side that they take the feed for the poultry. That's exactly why uh, we are. Let, let, let me quickly go back to uh, Engineer Ntok. You, you were mentioning uh, this, the, I don't know if to call it the stress or the problems you face uh, in your own farm. You had mentioned how you can't even a assess your farms at the moment. I, I ask again, would having security, uh, just, uh, if, if the, the, the Nigerian security ar architecture cannot support, because this is a big problem, do you see farmers beginning to go for private security firms just to ensure that there's farm, um, there's um, food rather? Okay, I'll, I'll take you from the last point, yeah. If you allow farmers to go for their private security uh, uh, provision, of course, if I have to take security to protect me while I'm farming, that would be some more cost, isn't it? Of course. And I have to transfer that cost into the commodity after harvest. Mm. So it's not going to solve the problem. The problem can only be sorted out when the government makes an intentional effort to stop the restiveness. Government must stop banditry. Government must stop insurgency. Government must stop the terrorism against farmers. Farmers, of course, you know, would migrate from uh, uh, normal dwelling settings exactly. and then go right into the hinterland. And you would find them in very small numbers, 1, 2 to 10 farming on over 50 hectares. Mm. You would see them there. And in the hinterland, you can't say that you would have about enough security. This, the protection of life and property, it's a fundamental responsibility on the table of the government. Right. We can't have to, at this time, in our nation building, begin to provide private security services for ourselves. If the government must do, they have to encourage perhaps community protection services, like the vigilante groups, and mandate them to also protect farmers. Because the way things are going right now, it is becoming something that is very important. Now I'm talking about farmer security. Mm. The farmers must be protected. The reason why we are where we are today is because of the insecurity on the part of the farmers. Farmers can't go to farm. Right. Because they can't go to farm, they are not cultivating. We are not even talking about the, 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 the pest war that we are fighting right now. I will soon go, yes. go to, to that. But let's still talk about the security. Ibrahim, you've seen that we have the security issues in pockets of some part of uh, the north. Are we seeing that state government in other parts of the country cannot move up and, and, and do better when it comes to ensuring? Because they don't have as much security issues like we, uh, like uh, the, some parts of uh, the, the north. What can the state government in those, in those parts do? You know, uh, like me, I farm almost all the 32 states in Nigeria, our farms. In some area, we can assess, we can do things. Some area there's no is going no going area. Mm. You cannot do anything there. You have to pay a ransom for the bandit or you pay to the community to help you to protect. After everything, you end up taking it to the market, you don't even have your capital out. And now the there's people that the solution is this. If the government will provide security for us, it will it should not be on cost to the farmers. It should be the cost for the government so that it can protect us very well. Like the vigilante he's saying, it's one of those things. 
like in community like a Jua, Jua in Kujeria, mm. we mobilize and I will be paying it. Then at the end of the day, we just like, let's just leave it. I have 40 hectares of beans that are just left like that. Not wow. Too. So imagine what will happen next year. You can see the price of beans now. If my 40 hectares is out, maybe it has like 60, it's out, you know. And a lot of farmers have uh, those problems. And again, another problem we have, like with the farmers, like me and him, we have people we call venture capitalists. They are pulling out. We need, Nigeria need to encourage most of these venture capitalists to put their money in the farm. Because you won't blame, you won't blame me because for, for exactly, exactly. So, our government can encourage them by providing security. Everywhere there's no bandit, there's no kidnapping. It will help the farmer, it will help the venture capitalists to come out with their money and invest. Mm. Some of them will say, we are investing in something that you cannot get out. Exactly. Investing, you give you story, something happen along the line. This, you know, the major problem is the security. And another one is the venture capitalist. Because the venture capitalists, most people don't know. If you invest your money in farmers, you don't throw it away. It will help you. Maybe anytime you go to the market, you can mm. get what you want with your money. But we are not praying for that. Something will come in. If you take it the way we are going like this, you go market with your money. Mm. You don't see something to buy. Let's just go back and see women. You make a list to go to the market to buy something. Nowadays, if you make your list, nothing will come out from that. True. The purchasing power of uh, a citizen in Nigeria is very low. But have you made efforts, um, uh, engineer, to write to the government if you have to? I mean, I feel really bad listening to two of you and talk about how you have abandoned hectares upon hectares of your farmland. Have you made efforts to write to the military? Like they often tell you, you did not get permission to get to your farm. You needed us to protect you. Have you done that? Writing to the government for protection of my farmland. Oh, for protection while you farm. Like um, it was said when, when uh, those uh, unfortunate, during that unfortunate incident where some farmers were massacred. That would be new. I mean, consulting or even writing to the government to protect my farm mm. or even protect me as a farmer, that would be new because I'm not, I'm alien to such kind of service. But when you had the military say you did not get permission from us, what, what came to your head? What actually came to your head when you heard that? I didn't know permissions were given, but I'm the farmer again. I didn't even know that we needed permission to go back to our farms. Now, if we didn't get the permission and our, our crops mm. are taken away, are bumped, and we're running away from our farms, we are still waiting to be called back to the farms. Because last time they said we never had permission. So we're still waiting for someone to give the order so mm -hmm. that we can go back to our farm. But what happens to these associations? I mean, there's the poultry farmers, there's the fish farmers, there's the, the rice, rice farmers, farmers. There's so much associations. I should expect that it should, it should be a big problem. You should all come together to, to get government to listen. Has that happened? Have you engaged government? Because uh, when you hear that 30 million Nigerians risk falling into acute food security, insecurity rather, it, it, it's there. It, it, it's really important for uh, those associations. Have, have, have you reached out? Are you engaging with government? Yeah. Yes. You know, in 20... 1920, 20, yeah, the federal government said maybe every farmer should have a civil defense, they engage civil defense in some area mm. to protect farmers, like such, like uh, Kujeria. Sometimes back, you know, anything that uh, has started, sometimes they end with. So it's like all the farmers should make inquiry to get, but not me and this young man. Not, not those kind of farmers. Not those kind of farmers. Mm. Yeah, what what, what kind same. of farmers are, are, are entitled to this security details? Maybe those retired, uh, other retired officers and civil servants that they know they want to protect them. Okay, Ibrahim, I'm yeah. not going to <laughs> follow you on that portrait. But you were talking about the uh, climate change that is affecting crops as well. For the little space you have to now farm, you have to battle with climate change. How, how bad is it? Yeah, um, uh, climate change is actually a phenomenon that is actually disturbing uh, crops. Very recently, we have experienced the invasion of uh, what uh, people would call caterpillar. 
mm. you know, that... Uh, is it a locust, pest, a pest, or pest just a, a caterpillar? Yeah, caterpillar, yeah, mm. it's like a worm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's greenish, basically, yeah. The, the conventional name for it is caterpillar, they know it. There's been an invasion of that pest on virtually everything. Now, the reason why that is happening is because of climate change. We had uh, seasonal rainfall arriving uh, very late this year, and it actually allowed this uh, 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 these worms mm. to fertilize their their eggs, and it's eating up maize, it's eating up rice, it's eating in everything in the farm, even the grasses is eating it up. And uh, one of the ways that we, the local farmers, would have uh, been able to fight this pest is through rain. Rain usually just washes, washes them, them away. It doesn't allow them to, to, to grow. It doesn't allow them to feed. It just kills them and washes them away, actually. But the, 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 the climate change has actually affected it, and farmers are just crying all by themselves because mm. government is not actually giving us much support as should be needed. You know, you mentioned the other time, if the commercial farmers are not relating uh, or not interacting properly with the government. The, 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 the fact, the real fact on the table is that there is no proper interaction. There is no inclusiveness. Most of the people who are actually doing the real work in the farms are not being identified. The loans that are going out from either CBN or all the government bodies put together are actually not reaching out to the core. It's not mm. reaching out to the real farmers out there. These things are being politicized. They are given to people. Some of them don't even have need for the agricultural loans. They collect the agricultural loans and invest it in completely different sectors. And most of these people that collect the agricultural loans, they collect them in volumes. When we go to collect agricultural loans, they give us, they say, we cannot collect above one million. We cannot get up to one million Naira to be able to invest in your farm. As farmers, we cultivate large hectares of land. What will one million do for us? Mm. We, we don't need that kind of money. And that's why we've been saying that there is no complete inclusiveness. Government should be able to identify us even while we're in the farm. I mentioned the other time, I was doing massive, massive hectares of land and I was cultivating rice. And I was actually the biggest rice farmer in that community. Not even the local government chairman realized that there was someone who was actually doing that. Mm. So if you don't realize the farmers that are actually putting up the hard work, investing their monies and trying to produce food, if you don't identify them, if you don't liaise with them, if you don't help them out to know what their challenges are and also to give government support or bring government support to reach out to mm. them, when eventually they harvest their products, they are going to sell at apex prices because they're going to include everything. everything. The government didn't support them, so they won't actually beat the, the, the end users on a soft landing, basically. Right. So what we are actually saying at the moment is government needs to make intentional efforts to reach out to the farmers. The real people who are farmers out there, government needs to make an intentional effort to reach out to them. And we're not hiding. Right. We're not hiding. If you go out in the farms, you're going to find us. You're going to identify people and what they're doing. Ibrahim, I don't know if you agree with him because it, it now feels like the government has to make an effort. And yet you farmers feel the brunt of it all. Don't you think you, you should make, make is, this effort? You know, if government want to do the right thing, when we say government, government, we are the government. That is why I use one word, that venture capitalist. Mm. Venture capitalists can they can go as need government just like people collecting money from government. They now identify the local farmers in their area. Right. Please take. This is you encouraging um, Nigerians because to because sometimes invest. Of, yes, mm. invest. Many Nigerians should invest. Even you, you can invest. Where you are in the office here, we work for you. We receive, it, we work for you. <laughs> so if you do that, you can get you can get access to this money. Right. But they have look at that cannot have access to this. But when we listen, when, when we read in the papers this this um appalling appalling um the data and statistics, uh, okay. you still need government. And I'm asking, shouldn't you make the, the first step uh, in approaching government in ensuring that those 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 uh, loopholes, those problems you face are okay. squarely addressed? Okay. Let me just give you one instance that is on the board right now. We have a business plan that we submitted to this COVID-19, putting up everything necessary <coughs> and all the plans and everything. Too. Now, government now paid the money. You can see the price has increased of everything. This guy now says, the government should come and take their money back because he cannot meet up with this money with the current price now. 
So, are you saying an intervention was yes, done intervention and was. A, a farmer said it, it, it can't it's work with that? work again. Wow. Something of 10 million naira now is about 80 something. So, so your money cannot, cannot be... cannot do anything. The best thing is to respond the money back. Mm. Or else they will charge you. So, look at this situation now. They don't act at the appropriate time when they're supposed to act. Right. People will just keep the file and continue watching... Okay, let's mm. see, let's see what but he also was. mentioned that very often those who really do the work do not get this. Get wow. Why, why do you think there's that? that um... The information is not spread like that. Like the way, that's what I say. The information they don't get to the right person at the right time. Mm. The right people at the right time. The way to get the information. Like as I mentioned, it's in the farm, in that area. Very big life. I'm the local government. Chairman, don't even know somebody is existing. Somebody is working like this. Somebody is trying to plan. Somebody and is planning. His, his, somebody his. is planning for the future of the of Nigerians in that area, because it's planning for the future of Nigeria in that area. True. What we farmers saying that no farmer, no nation. People don't believe, because we always our intention is that let's see what Nigeria will take 2020. People are planning for election 2023. We are planning for the food stock for 2023 now. Mm. That is farmers' intention. The last time you came in, Jinantuk, we talked about storage problems. Uh, and we, we, are we all even storing enough? Are we, right now as we speak, with the food security issues, with the hiking prices, what should Nigerians um, project for next year? We are empty, actually. Please, I'm sorry to say that, but there's nothing to store. We're already hungry. When, when you're hungry, you don't have enough to keep in the storehouse. Mm. And I mentioned the other time, because of the technique um, applied by farmers to cultivate, most of the crops that we have don't stand the test of time to be put in the storage. Government needs to employ the private sector a great deal to be involved in first the cultivation. Mm. Um, most of the grains that are being stored, most are genetically modified. They have been engineered in such a way that they can stand the taste of time. What we have right now, if you throw them into the storehouse, you would lose them all completely. For example, um, in, 20, in 2018, I stored over um, 10 tons of beans. Mm. Yes, and I thought I was doing it well with all the local applications on how to preserve beans, and I lost over 60% of it. Wow. The, the, the rest, 40% that I took to the marketplace, couldn't even give me back my, my invested capital. So when you talk about storage, this has to... What, went, what would you say went wrong? Basically, I would say um, we didn't have... The, the storage facility wasn't really good. It was just a warehouse, yeah? And... Um, we didn't have good chemicals to be able to to protect mm. the commodity even in the storehouse. Now, these are part of our deficiencies. If we bring our personal funds cultivate, we need the government to meet us halfway with facilities. Right. We must have a good storage facility where when we bring our product, we can take it to that place and pay maybe little there is something very little exactly. for the government to warehouse this mm. for us. That facility is lacking. Not all farmers have the capacity, the financial capacity to produce a warehouse that can actually carry what they have cultivated. To cultivate is easier because you can lease the yes, land. Exactly. And do, yeah, but when the harvest comes out, storing it, usually it's not easy. You True. don't have the capacity to be able to process these things mm. and even to store them. The government needs to meet us halfway by producing, also by providing a storage a facility for us and also providing milling processes, I mean food processing plants needs to be provided because uh, the food processing plant comes at high price. Most of them have to be imported. You need to set yeah. them up. True. Government must help us involve private sector into True. the storage facility, uh, 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 you know, value chain hmm. of, uh, of our agriculture. Within that value chain, people must come in and invest in storage capacity and also techniques to be able to store food True. commodities. Okay. So, Lamidi, let's talk about um, the poultry. I know I, I, I attack you on the poultry a lot because um, that's where you were the former general uh, 
uh, secretary. Now, what are those challenges? You cannot undermine the proteinous uh, uh, nutrients that, that we get from eggs or, or from... Everything e exactly. from exactly. So what can we do to get eggs back to the 600, 700 we used to buy it before? We are, even the farmers, we are praying to have that price out. Although right now, federal government is working on a maze out now that they want to give it to the farmers. I pray they should give it to the right channel. I think they have us. Although like the poultry farmers of Nigeria, we are into in with federal government always. We meet them, we submit, we tell them, this is our demand, this is what we want, this is what the people want. And they are working on it. I pray if, they, if the maze come out successful and we have it in abandon, the price will drop. But not that of 600, please. <laughs> I don't plan to make you bankrupt, of course. We'll just quickly open phone lines um, <laughs> so that uh, those at home can also contribute to the conversation today. The number to call is 090-5740-8127. That is 090-5740-8127. Uh, remember, when you call, move away from your radio or television set so we could have a proper conversation. Now, if we have to be a little optimistic, if something has to be done right now and here, what would be your suggestion? Oh, great. Um, there, is, there is an avenue, an opening. It's not sad, sad, sad all the way. Yeah? Right. There's an opening right now with the African Free Trade Continental Just Agreement. Government, exactly. Yes, that needs to be explored a great deal. Yeah. Okay, so let's quickly uh, pick this call. And Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Yes. Name and location, please. My, my name is Kayode. I'm speaking from Garaki. Kayode Ajala, so good to hear from you this morning. Please go I, ahead. I would like to ask a question from your guest. Right. Now, don't you think that uh, there is need for us to have a farmer's board at federal level, at state level, and local government level? The of the farmer's, farmer's board, board, you say? Will be to... Uh, would be to have the list of farmers in the room mm -hmm. and among the big ones so that they can have access to the funds given by the federal government. Right. We keep hearing that funds are available for farmers. But not all farmers are getting it. If big farmers like you are not getting it, how are we sure that the small small farmers are not having challenges? That's number one. Mm. Number two. Sorry. Now, you know dollars to Naira is quite high now. And it is time for us to let government know that if we can develop our farming system well, we can compete very well in the market. Now, the government needs to provide storage. This government needs to provide storage. And if they provide this storage, it will help our farmers and protect their crops. They can have something to sell. They can also have something to keep from next other system. Hmm. So my question is, don't you think that these are what these are problems of policy? That's not the question I wanted to ask you this morning. Thank you for giving me the audience. Kada Jala, it's always good to hear your perspective. He's asking um <laughs> what we can do, uh, is it a policy problem or can we also open up boards, farmer boards? Uh, we already have, I think we already have enough boards in Nigeria to, 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 to work, but what, what, what would be your take on that? Yes, um, I, I share his thoughts, like uh, we don't have a complete data of farmers in mm. Nigeria and what exactly they cultivate. We don't have that. And if government does not have that, how would you be able to determine who gets what and where is that going into? Exactly. He mentioned the other time, um, as part of the requirement to uh, collect the government uh, facility mm. on agriculture, aided by NISA, you have to fill up the business plan and do all of that and then submit it. Right. Yeah? And as part of all this that you put together, at the end of the day, you're just giving money. And I know a lot of people who have collected that money and they launched it into mm. entertainment business. Right. Some have put it into different kinds of businesses and estate. estate business and so on. And the real farmers are not getting it, which means that there is no follow-up. Mm. After this money is disbursed, there is no follow-up as to where you are actually putting in this money. And that's why I say that um, it has to be a foul play that 
when you go into the hinterlands, when you go into the rural communities, at the break of dawn, you can see farmers migrating, you know, mm, going to, out to, to farm. Yes, exactly. These people don't have access to the internet. They don't have access to most of the requirements that government wants meet. them to meet up with. Right. They don't even know that government is doing... Okay, so basically the criteria should be more peculiar to those really doing the work. But let me do what's your, your response to what the Kaida Jama said. He's right. Because if you have one board, like we have different associations, mm. then I say PAN is one of those board that federal government, the government itself recognizes right. as number one in terms of poetry. I want other people to have the, the same thing too, so that a more they, engaging more association. Engaging. Because when you see if PAN speak, in fact, everybody will know that poetry has not here has. They are working on but there's also the problem with all these um, associations. Some members of such associations would always tell you that we are not carried along, we, did, uh, we are not even captured in. So how, w how can we bridge that so that we know, like he said, that we have the data, we know who's doing what? One, data is one of those major problems. Hmm. When the government don't have the data, or we don't, we, they don't have the data, if you are paying, how do you disburse money? Sometimes when I heard that they disburse money to so 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 so, so then, on which is it livestock or crops? But okay. they cannot even fish out. Is it for the livestock or the crops or this or this? So if they have good data, they're able to oh in Buari area council we've done this for social farmer for beans farming, in Kuje this, in this, then in Kafancha in this, like uh Kogi State is trying to come out with something they call KEDA, Kogi State Entrepreneurial Development Agency. Which right. is now going to is working with they have a department there now. Before I don't, I just meet them through one on one. They introduce me, say, You have to come in, you have to do this as a farmer. You do this, you farm in our area, you have to do this. To right. Farmers. See, now they're not pulling me to work if I don't work. The same thing happened in Belgium. Okay, well, well, just just hold on. We have yet another caller. Hello, good morning. Hello, good morning. Yes, good morning. Name and location, please. Yeah, this is Felix from Abuja. Felix, go ahead. Yes. Now that bandits don't allow our people to go to farm. How do we solve this food crisis that is coming? Mm -hmm. Because the way things are going, the federal government don't seem to have solutions. Right. The bandits, the level of effort we're expecting from federal government to put into combating these bandits and kidnappers and go around. We're not seeing such effort. Despite what they're doing, it, 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 sorry, Felix, I, think, I didn't catch it, your, I didn't catch your surname. Hello. I didn't catch your surname. You say? I didn't catch your surname, Felix. Um, I didn't. Felix, Felix, Osemeka. Okay. Um, um, well, the government is doing what it can. We can see uh, effort yes, from the that, government that, that, there. But well, well, I, I will ask your question. Is the effort? With the effort that the government has put up in looking for them, the canoe and, and, and then uh, ransacking the house of Sunday Go, if they have followed the leader, just booming, visiting the bandits in the forest, and the DSS follow that lead, I think we must have gotten some solution to this bandit race. Okay, Felix Chukwemeka, I'm, I'm sure the Thank government you. is doing what it can to ensure that. Uh, the farmers are protected, Nigerians are protected, they fight uh, the, the insurgencies and banditry. We're not talking Namdikano on this platform today. So on another day when we are doing that, you can, you can discuss that. But what would be your response? He just wants to know that. Um, as lo is, is, is the government doing enough? And uh, what else should the government do? The government is actually trying in her own best effort. But of course, um, a private sector has to come in, mm. you know, um, and this has to be the part of the responsibility of the local government, particularly, because um, uh, food is it's it's uh, it's driven from the rural community, basically, right. where the local authority is uh, controlled by the local government. So, if we're talking about farmer security, basically, it should be within the the, the control of. of the local government. And I mentioned the other time that the vigilante uh, uh, kind of security service needs to be strengthened. 
it needs to be strengthened seriously. Mm. And, and the community-based protection uh, facilities needs also to be strengthened, particularly for farmer protection. Right. If we must fight food crisis in Nigeria, it has to come from that end. It has to come from the people who knows the... Uh, the uh, engineer, I had posed a question to him earlier. I mean, we have this crisis in only some parts of the country, in only uh, pockets here and there. What's happening to the many other states? What should the state governors do to enhance agriculture? Yes, basically, um, you, you would know that this farmer head uh, uh, crisis has actually... Uh, been something that uh, been happening within areas that are referred to as the food basket of the nation. Now, I'm not being particular to Benue mm. states. Every state, even in the northeast and the northwest, these states are food baskets, of course. In cross river states where a lot of agricultural uh, activities are going on, even down in the south, mm. all these areas are referred to as food baskets. baskets right. And if you check them out, they're having serious crisis. And farmers everywhere, farmers everywhere are actually crying. And, and we, we need not push this to the state government particularly. Of course, they have a role to play. Mm. Federal government has a role to play. But allow me to say that this is a pivotal responsibility of the local government. Protecting farmers has got to be a duty, uh, a, you know, delivered, dished out by the local government. The local government authorities must take responsibility for farmer protection. Local government yes. authority, do you agree with, yeah. with, with, with you know, local government was, they are still um, clamoring for autonomy? Yeah. They, they have the issues of not having enough to yeah. even serve uh, the developmental needs of their communities. Do you agree that it should in be? That, mm -hmm. If they start even working on those, the tax they will raise from all those things, it's even enough for them to make something. Tax easier. that will burden the farmers the even farmer. more, they, and they then we'll see that hike. Okay, look at, there are so many other states now that are now working directly with the farmers now. Hmm. Talk of Bauchi state. So many areas that they don't have crisis that you're seeing. We are working on this. The farmers are now moving to this area. Then I move myself to Bank to Kara. Now, Kogi now have what we call Kida. So, you see, they're now working on the local government. Like what you farm, what you can farm in that area, go and give them like your, put them through. They should farm rice here, they should farm beans here. That's what other states are doing now. That is what is on the ground now. Right. Because if you don't have any security, you invite farmers. I can call, sorry, Mr. Ennis, go to social state and assist them out. Let's see what we can do there. That is how we, that is what farmers are working on and it's going on now. Right. But we don't want people to know where so that they will not go there again and start kidnapping people. <laughs> we don't need to be. For so, security for reasons. Security reasons. <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> but if we ha if you have to um the, the time is, is, is fast spent. If you have to suggest ways farmers can continue doing what they're doing despite uh, the the like the climate change problems that you have. What how did you surmount your own with the, the invasion of um, what you call the caterpillar yes what would um basically i would like to say that you know um, farm is an employment farming is actually an employment and then security is also an employment um, government has all it takes yeah. to provide uh, farming activity as well as security but of course they usually present uh, or produce just one percent of that the private sector does 99 percent production of employment for people so um i think we should all employ the habit of uh, what we used to call operation feed the nation like i mentioned before and intentionally the, the agricultural research institute mm. must begin to look in areas of giving us engineering seedlings that's genetically modified uh, seedlings has come to, they've, they've actually come to stay. Wow. What we have today has... Are they safe though? You yes, they are. You, okay. yes, they are. Of mm. course, we've been consuming a lot of them. They are safe. And what we have today is no longer resistant to a lot of pests. It's, it can do well with the kind of climatic variations that we're having right now. So uh, there's a change. There's a wow. paradigm shift in what we used to have before. Things are beginning to change. For example, we used to have small grains of granite. Now we have bigger grains of granite. It produces a large volume of protein for us. So um, biologically, 
or genetically produced uh, uh, seedlings. Organically, organic organic and organic. genetically. Genetic okay. is one of the ways that we can improve and increase food supply. Right. Because what we have now, it's no longer adding up. So we should look in that direction and begin to produce mm. more. Okay. More, um, more Ibrahim, yeah. please uh, encourage us. What, when can we start seeing uh, uh, poultry uh, uh, products cheaper? Where? From you, you can start from your backyard. Everybody should learn how to do one or two farming. I taught some women how to farm in their backyard using sack. You know the sack you throw away? Yes. You visit to farm yam, Irish potato, and it's in your backyard. So if you cannot go to the farm, you can do it. All those your flower pot, remove them and put something inside. Not flour now. We're talking of food. We're not talking of flour. That's how, where we are now. That's where we are now. Right. But in the poultry poultry uh, sector, yeah. how do we, when when can we start seeing a change? Well, you know, for now we are just in quarter now. Before in the next two months now, you see the prices will drop because now maize is coming out now. Right. So and federal government is trying to support about how many metric tons. Right. So when they do that, it will drop. Thank you for your comforting words. This, this is where we round it up on the roundtable. Thank you, Engineer N.S. Ntuk, an environmental expert, and Ibrahim Lamidi, a for, farmer and former General Secretary of the Poultry Farmers Association of Nigeria. My name is Joy Radimini Asaye. Until tomorrow when the roundtable continues, have a wonderful day.